In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own dash script so that your character can leap forward when you click shift. So let's get started. The first thing you have to do is insert a local script into starter character scripts. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the debris service. So local debris equals game get service debris. We're then going to get the user input service by doing local user input service equals game get service user input service. We're going to get the player by doing game get service players dot local player. We're then going to get the character by doing local character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight. Then we're going to get the humanoid. So local humanoid equals character weight child humanoid. And we're also going to get the humanoid root part by doing local humanoid root part equals character weight for child humanoid root part. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set some variables and these will serve as our settings for our dash script. So we're going to have a variable for the dash time. So this is how long the player dashes for. So I'll just set it to 0.5. We're also going to have another variable called amount, and this is going to indicate how powerful our dash force will be. And lastly, we're going to have a variable for the max force, and it's essentially just a vector 3 value. And then we're going to set a cooldown. So local cooldown equals false, and local cooldown time equals one. So once a player dashes, they have to wait one second before they can use it again. Now we're going to do user input service input began, and we're going to connect a function to this. So if not game processed and input dot key code equals enum dot key code dot shift and cooldown is equal to false then we're just checking whether or not the player has used the left shift button and we're making sure that the cooldown is not active so if this is the case we are going to set cooldown to true that way they can't spam it and what we're going to do now is we're going to create a body velocity so instance dot new body velocity. So we're just going to parent the body velocity now to the character's torso. We're going to set the max force to the max force that we've just created. And we're going to set the velocity to the character's torso's look vector. And we're going to multiply it by the amount that we've set. Next, we're going to have a for loop, which will iterate through all of the parts inside the character model of the player. So in pairs, character get children do if V is a base part. So let's make sure that it is a part. We're going to create two attachments and then we're going to add a trail to that attachment. That way we get a really cool trail that goes behind the player when they dash. So we're going to create the first attachment here. We're going to call it attachment one. We're going to say attachment one equals instance.new attachment. And we're going to parent it to the base part that we are iterating through. We're going to set the orientation to be vector three dot new negative 90, zero, zero. And then we're going to set the position to vector three dot new zero, zero point five, zero. Then let's create the second attachment and I'm just going to duplicate the code that we've just written. And I'm going to name it attachment two instead. So I'm going to rename the appropriate sections. 
and I'm just going to switch the position to negative 0.5 here. Lastly, we will make a trail that we will connect to the two attachments. So local trail equals instance dot new trail, and we're going to parent it to the part trail dot attachment zero equals attachment one and trail dot attachment one equals attachment two. And then trail dot lifetime, so this is how long it lasts. So it lasts for 0 0.1 seconds. Now we're going to use the debris service by doing debris add item attachment one dash time. And we're going to do the same for the two other objects that we've just created. So attachment two and we make it last for the dash time. The debris services job is to delete the items after a certain amount of time. So trail and then dash time. Next we are going to set a start time and we're going to set it to the current time. So local start time equals tick. Now we're going to have a while loop. So while tick minus start time is less than dash time do body velocity dot velocity equals humanoid root part dot c frame dot c frame dot look vector times amount and then we are going to do task dot weight so what this while loop allows us to do is constantly update the body velocity's velocity so we can change the direction of our dash while we're dashing and then at the end we are going to wait the cooldown time and then we are going to set cooldown back to false. So with this, the dash script is completed. So in this case, just make sure your game is in R6. So you can go and change the type of avatar you have in your game inside game settings. But sometimes it'll ask you to save your game to Roblox first. So I'm just going to save my game and call it dash game. So I'm going to go back into game settings under avatar and I'm going to set it to R6. If you want to keep it as R15, you just have to make sure you're using the upper torso instead of just torso because in R15, the character doesn't have anything called torso, it would be called upper torso or lower torso. But for simplicity, I will just keep this as R6. So one last thing I forgot, after we create the body velocity, we want to make sure to add it to the debris service so it will delete the body velocity once the dash has been finished. So now the dash script should work. Now let's go ahead and play test that. Now when I press left shift it should allow me to dash. As you can see my character gets pushed forwards and there's this cool trail that's created and I can even switch directions while I'm dashing so I can kind of turn off to the side if I wanted to. So that's a dash script in Roblox. If you want to create an animation for the dash script, it's really simple. You just have to go under avatar, under character, and let's insert a R6 block avatar. We're then gonna open the animation panel. So I'm gonna select the rig, and I'm just going to click the split sign over here and add all body. Now I'm going to move the timeline down so we're three frames into it. And I'm going to make the character appear as if it was dashing. So I'm going to have the arms and legs sticking out. So just like this. So just like this, this will be our dash animation. So they start off in a neutral position and then they and then they spread their arms and their legs as if they were leaping through the air. Lastly, I'm just gonna copy the keyframe and paste it at the end over here. So that way our dash animation lasts the full one second here. 
I mean, in this case, the dash time actually lasts for half a second, so I'm going to move the final keyframe down to halfway through. So after 15 frames, they should go back to normal. And I will just copy the initial frame where we are resting, and I'll add it to the end over here. So it takes three frames to get to the dashing position, and then three frames to go back to normal. So this will account for the dash time in the air. Lastly, just click the three dots over here and set the animation priority as action. Then publish the animation to Roblox. I'm going to shrink the window here so I can click save. And now let's copy the ID. Now go back inside the script that we've just created and add an animation inside. Once you've added the animation inside, name it dash. In the properties, you want to add the animation ID to be the animation ID that we just copied. Now go back inside your script and add the following line. So right before we apply the body velocity, we want to play the animation. So we're going to do humanoid load animation script dot dash and play that animation after loading it. So now our dash script has an animation attached to it. So let's go and check it out. So as you can see, when I'm dashing, I have the animation I have created playing while I'm dashing. So yeah, that's how you make a dash script in Roblox. Now all of these settings over here are adjustable. You can make the dash time longer, or you can make the dash force more powerful. It's all up to you. And yeah, that's about it for dashing. If you're looking for a really straightforward way to learn Roblox scripting and Roblox development in general, I highly recommend you check out my course on Udemy. I'll leave links in the description and in the comments below. This course will take you through the complete basics of the Roblox Studio interface and programming on Roblox, with quizzes and notes to reinforce your understanding. Then we'll move to the more advanced concepts where I'll teach you everything you need to become a master scripter. Finally, we're going to put it all together to make your very first Roblox game. By the end of this course, you'll have the skills to bring your ideas to life. Are you ready? Join me today and let's start creating.